We think that we're pretty normal And we think that we're good at what we do And we think that we're pretty funny We think that we're pretty cool some help here. Ah! Kevin! Kevin, stop! It's there! Help! Stop! Ah! Stop! Kevin! Help! It's Zach! Ah! Ah! Garlic and a wooden steak. Okay, first of all, I'm not a vampire. I'm a mummy. Second of all, I'm not a mummy. <gasps> Give Cleopatra my regards. Batman speaking. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> Great. I don't think books are ready for a makeover. Like what? I don't know. I mean, words on paper bound together. Books just seem so pedestrian now, you know? What are you guys talking about? Chris here wants to revolutionize books. Can't be done, there's nothing to change about books. The only thing you could really do to change books would be to abolish them. There it is, that's what I'm talking about. I want to abolish books. Are you in or are you in? I'm in. In. Just for the record, I don't have anything against books. I just don't have anything else to do. I'm in. Let's do it. No, no more, more books! books. Newspapers are kind of like books. Let's get them. Let's kill them all. <laughs> well, good job, guys. We did it. I never thought a world without books would feel so damn good. Yeah, it does feel good, but I feel hungry. I'll fix us something. I got some pizzas in the freezer. Yeah, abolishing books builds an appetite. And it really built my self-esteem, too. Hey, guys, the, uh, the oven is, like, leaking gas. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. Look in the instruction book. Yeah, the instruction book. Someone had brought it over from, uh, I think it was uh, Massachusetts. You want to see me, Mr. Coleman? Hey, Tom, come on in. You can have a seat right there. So, Tom, we've been looking over your figures, and um, we're very impressed. Very impressed. 
We're going to give you a raise. Really? Yes, really. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, what was that? What was what, Tom? What was what? So, do you have any questions? So, I'm doing a great job? Yes, yes. <laughs> what is that? What are you doing? What I am doing, Tom, is marveling at what an incredible asset you are to this company. <laughs> so, I'm a great asset? Yes. <laughs> no, no. Wait, am I gonna lose my job? No! Yes, yes. <laughs> Is this supposed to be funny? Is this supposed to be funny? You out there tell us. Write us an email telling us- 100 words or less, Chris. Right, I always forget that part. 100 words or less, telling us whether or not you think this is funny. Any, any email we get will be read on the next episode. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, as the stain upon our country. In closing, as I stand before you fine citizens of Chicago, I remind you, Glory of the days, forever is the change. They can take away our spirits, but they can never return our ideas. <laughs> that makes no f***ing sense. I want this to be a great picture, see? I want the glitz and the glamour. I want to hold a mirror up to life. A mirror up to life. I want a dancing number and a big band. Count Basie or Duke Ellington, a real showstopper. Shite, maybe we could do a rags to riches deal. Poor Dane makes good in the big city. Yeah, girls are singing, they're dancing, a big time club owner falls for her. Where's the glitz, boys? The glamour, the action, and the drama. This has to be the greatest picture I've ever seen. The greatest. I want mm, Garbo and Kelly, Bergman and Bogart, boners and penises. Say, we could do a war picture. End of World War II, Dame's waiting on a fella to return. He's a bomber, she's a singing, a dancer. The fella returns and she's all washed up, see? Lost the goods. And then he's gotta teach her to dance and sing all over again. It could be a real big showstopper at the end, boss. Gals and feathers, colors tapping, fireworks. Yeah, we could get Louis Armstrong to play the horn. The big time, a real hot number. I want to be the biggest showstopper of all time, boys. The biggest. I want the gals and the colors, the horns and the heroin, the rape and the addiction. I want a Louis Armstrong blowing on that damn horn of his. Say, the dame could be mute and a cripple. And the fella, a war veteran, can teach her to dance and sing and fall in love. We're making pictures here, boys. Pictures. I want murder and rape, sex, drugs, rock and roll, satanic rituals. Mm, pictures! Pictures! It could take place on a boat in the South Pacific. Love's lucky on the river. Good. A boat. I like it. Then the gal gets gang raped, shot full of heroin, gets AIDS, and infects the entire boat. Everyone's dying at the end. A real showstopper. I like it, boys. I like it. I want to see it in the lights by the end of the year. We could call it Sundays at the Rain. Call it whatever you want, because the critics will be calling it the greatest picture ever made. These lights are so bright. Lose the shades and let's go. Hey, the wonders of modern technology have changed our lives oh so for the better. And now with high quality printers for your home computer, it's easier than ever before to print your own checks. Just make up a name, make up a number, and go to town. Most places are slack and they won't even ask for a form of identification. Thanks, you schmuck. And here's the key. At the bottom, in really small writing, just put this check not endorsed by any bank and should not be accepted under any circumstances. It's not your fault if the store doesn't read the fine print, right? And even if they do catch it, you and the cashier will have a really hearty laugh at the sheer silliness of it all. You know what a really good name would be for like um, a thing that holds all your checks and it's really cool? The Checkmate. Do you think anybody's thought of that? Probably. Yeah, probably. But will you write it down for me? Back before there were people, there was nothing more than a big empty hole in the sky. And then, in 1850, the sun was born. Hello there! I'm the sun and I keep you warm with the fiery blazes of heaven, which are actually made of incandescent gas and neutrinos, or, as I like to call them, Shiny particle angel dusties tied up in laced ribbons made of God's love. Let us move on. Meet Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln actually invented gravitational force by being so tall that he could juggle planets. 
pretty dutiful, huh? I am Abe Lincoln, and I will never tell a lie. As things moved on, so did the universe. And as things moved on, as a result, Father Time came into being out of necessity. Hello there. I'm Father Time, the master of the universe. I control time, so I control the universe. Watch me reverse the universe. And now back again, Ben. Isn't that needy pity? I'm totally cool. So I drew. Later, dudes. Oh, look who we have here. It's the man in the stars. He's famous as heck. And then, in the winter of 1969, the planet of Saturn got scared, and for this reason surrounded itself with a protective series of rings that as a result, to this very day, are still called rings. And it is these rings that actually form the very core of the universe. For without these rings, there would be no you, and there would be no you, and there would be no you. Thank you and have a blessed day. Do you think the babies in the womb are afraid that they're blind? I, uh, I don't think they know they're alive. Well, don't be stupid. But if the mom tilted her head back and she opened her mouth really wide, do you think it'd be like, like a flood of sunlight into the baby? Because uh, <laughs> like in Look Who's Talking, they make it look like there's a lamp down there because everything's all bright and pink and glowing and you can see everything, but no. It's pitch black. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you're right. The babies are probably scared that the, they're blind. Well, okay, so what? I mean, what are you gonna do about it? Do you remember the snake light? Because I bet a woman could take a snake light, and if she bent it just right, then she could, like, shove it into the... <laughs> Dude, no. That is, that is, uh, you're not right. Yeah. yeah, but if she did it right, and then she got it... <laughs> hey, I'm not right. What do you think, Moo Cow? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my turn. Okay. Biddle, biddle, fun, fiddle. I want Kevin in the middle. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, pick your poison, dude. Uh, okay, uh, uh Ryan. <laughs> Let's go, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Fiddle, fiddle, fun, fiddle, I want Brad in the middle. Uh, again? Okay. This isn't gonna work. It'll work, it'll work. You gotta be cool, you gotta be cool. Showtime, and Jen. Evening, sir. One large pepperoni pizza, about 1263. We don't have any money. Here's what I was thinking. You come in. Have the pizza with us, okay? Call your boss, say it was a Supreme, something wrong, so you gave it to a homeless guy with diabetes, okay? We'll call later, we'll act all mad, but you know what? It's not your fault. It's the guy's fault that made the damn pizza. First off, the cook would know that he made a pepperoni. And second of all, it would be my fault, because I should have checked the order before I left. Brad will have sex with you if you give us this pizza. What? Shut up! I told you to play it cool! Look, guys, I don't have time for this. If you don't have the money, you don't get the pizza. Are you sure? Yes, positive. Congratulations, you passed the test. Brad and I, we work for the Dixieland Pizza Company's corporate training division. We devise little tests like these to see who the best drivers are. And you know what, Dave? You are the best driver. No. No. Supreme. It really is the wrong thing. Awesome. I love Supreme. Supreme sucks. I wouldn't pay five dollars for a Supreme pizza. We didn't pay anything. Yeah. Let me get some Chinese food. You hate Chinese food. I don't hate it if it's free. The Supreme was free! The Supreme was free!
Zach, I gotta ask you. Yeah? What's your secret? How are you able to stay so thin and always eat dessert? Well, it's easy with this two-step program. Just two steps? Step one, you have to think positive. When eating your favorite dessert, think to yourself, this, this will, will not fatten me up. up. This, this will, will not fatten me up. up. Keep repeating it. Keep believing it. Sounds easy enough. What's the second step? Well, after finishing your meal, walk to the nearest bathroom and throw it all up. You mean like vomit? I mean like vomit. Zach, that's bulimia. That's serious stuff. You should seek help. It may just seem like harmless vomiting, but bulimia is serious stuff. Find the help. Use the help. Help the help. Lop the help. Dried the help. Trantalize the help. Brought to you by Stop Bulimia America. Reminding you to just stop bulimia. America. Before Heisenberg came along, it was I before E all the time. Everything was clear and precise. Now he says it's I before E, except after C. Well, I cannot, shall not, will not accept that this world of harmony is governed by such an imperfect theory. But look at the evidence, John. Uh, I mean, look at words like uh, uh, deceive, perceive, anti-conceive. You know, that's the nature of the physical world. And all Heisenberg's done is create a theory to satisfy it. It's I before E, except after C. What about words like neighbor and way? They don't follow your so-called theory. If we accept theories with exceptions, what's next? I'll tell you what's next. Uh, school children learning imper imperfect jingles to memorize the days of the months. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except February, which has 28, except on leap year. Nick a packer. You're a weird man, John Nash. Uh, soon you will die, though, and with it will die your weird brain. That, that, is, where you, that, that is where you are wrong, my good man. Uh, I, I will disprove your I before E, except after C theory. I, I will make it perfect again. I before E, all the time. God, he's so weird. Yeah, don't forget schizophrenic. But he does get to have sex with Jennifer Conley, so... Why not E or O or P or J or L? If it's, it's not going to be a good rule, why, why have any rule for the love of all things sacrosanct? I before quit a U-I-O-P. I am in Nita Ochenta. Sorry, I am not meaning to bother you. I was just wanting to clean. It is my job. What is this that is happening? Uh, I'm working. I, um, I have to deconstruct codes uh, for the Russians to, to blow up America. That sounds not good for America. A and I don't believe you. You are very much thinking about language, I can tell, because also I am very much thinking about language in the days of now. I, I am just coming to America a few months ago and I'm languaging here at the school during the day and cleaning at night. Uh, Anita, 
please, if you are studying language right now, please, please Anita, please tell me why I before E except after C form? Why not I before E all the time? I before E all the time. Why has it got to be that way, Anita? Anita, Anita. Maybe, Mr. Nash, I before E isn't being here. Maybe it is being here. And it was then that I realized that only with love, and love only, and no other emotion in the human heart or otherwise under the sky or above the sky or even further as you get kind of far out into space. Yes, only with love can it truly be. I before we, all the time. The bulls look really tough today. But you can do it, Timmy. Best friends can do anything.